Welcome to episode 106 of Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. This past week in my area, it rained almost nonstop for three days. And although I haven't started building, I was thinking I'd be pretty nervous if I had started and my house was being framed and exposed to all that rain. It got me to wondering, is it okay if it rains while your house is being framed and before the house is dried in? Remember, dried in means that the building shell has been completed. A dried in house includes all exterior walls of the house, along with house wrap or some other moisture barrier, the roof sheathing with an appropriate waterproof roof covering, and coverings for any openings, including window or door openings. These steps keep out wind, rain, and snow so that weather-sensitive materials both inside and outside the house are protected from weather damage. So again, I wondered, is it okay for a home's frame to be rained on? And if not, what can we do if it rains before the house is dried in? So I did a little research, and here's what I found. There are many articles out there written by builders who say it's perfectly okay if your home's frame gets rained on. They say it happens all the time and they simply continue the building process without much thought about the damp or wet framing lumber and without much change to the normal building schedule. Those builders say they've been building houses in the rain for years and it's never posed a problem with rot, mold, or cosmetics. Well, That sounded a little bit too good to be true, and frankly, it was a little bit hard to believe since so many articles that I've read over the past year have said that water and moisture are the greatest enemy of any home, that moisture causes more problems in construction than almost anything else. So why would a wet house frame not be a problem? That made me dig a little bit deeper. I found an article on finehomebuilding.com that actually warns against moving ahead with construction if you have a significantly damp house frame. The article says that framing lumber can attract and hold water and that water within the lumber changes the wood's characteristics. Water makes wood swell. And the problem with using damp, swollen lumber to frame your house is that the lumber will shrink back towards its normal size after the house is complete and the heating and cooling systems have run for several months. This shrinkage causes the house to settle and shift more than usual. Here are some of the problems that can occur with using damp lumber for your house frame. Drywall cracks and nail pops can occur. Nail pops are when you see the heads of nails literally popping through the surface of the drywall. You can get floor squeaks and stair squeaks and your plumbing waste lines and vents can move, leading to roof leaks. If moisture content in lumber is too high, it can cause more serious problems like mold growth and rot. So what should you do if it's been raining on your framing lumber? Before you proceed with installing drywall, test the moisture content of the framing lumber with a moisture meter. The Fine Home Building article recommends the Xtech MO220 Wood Moisture Detector which is currently less than $150 on Amazon. Again, that's the Xtech MO220 Wood Moisture Detector. You might want to invest in this moisture detector or some other moisture detector for the construction of your new home and then sell it on Craigslist or some other site when the house is complete. Alternatively, you might ask your framing carpenter or builder if they have a moisture meter that you can use for testing of your framing lumber. Make sure that the testing is done while you're on site and before the drywall is installed. You'll want to be on site when the lumber is tested just to verify the moisture content for yourself and insist that the house frame be tested in several different areas. So what's our target moisture content? It's 19% or less. No lumber in your house should have moisture content above 19%. The article says, quote, this is a hard rule. If you're getting readings on your moisture meter above 19%, then cancel your sheetrock hang crew till it's all below that 19% threshold, end quote. 
The reason you want your lumber to have 19% or less moisture content is because building science experts say that moisture content consistently above 19% can cause mold spores in lumber to be activated, starting the rotting process. Although you can accept a moisture reading of 19%, ideally, you should shoot for moisture content below 15% for kiln-dried lumber and less than 17% for any green pressure-treated lumber. With those lower moisture content readings, less lumber drying and shrinkage will take place over time. And as a result, you'll see fewer settling flaws in your drywall, such as those drywall cracks and nail pops. So what do you do if your house frame has a moisture content above 19%? First and foremost, do not proceed with installing your drywall until the wood's moisture content is 19% or less. I know I just said that, but it's such an important point It bears repeating. If you're using oriented strand board or OSB for your sheathing and it gets so wet that it swells and puffs up, it unfortunately needs to be replaced. If you live in an especially rainy or humid climate, consider using plywood sheathing. Although plywood is usually more expensive than OSB, plywood is more resistant to moisture damage. Here are four main ways to get wet framing lumber to dry. Number one, wait it out. Wet lumber can dry naturally if given enough time. If the outdoor temperatures are above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, it usually takes about four weeks for moisture content to decrease about 4%. It might take six to 12 weeks for that 4% drop if you live in a cold and rainy climate. And if it's below freezing, it'll take many months. If you live in a cold, damp climate or If you simply want to speed up the drying process, you can use one of the following methods. Fans, a dehumidifier, or heat. Carpet blower fans, or some other powerful fans, can increase air movement and decrease drying time. Keep the fans running 24-7 if possible, with window and door openings closed. These fans are very effective, but they're also expensive, so make sure you secure the fans to the house frame with chains and padlocks. You might ask your framing carpenter or builder if they have fans that you can use for drying the house out. If the outside temperature is above 45 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, fans can typically decrease the moisture content of framing lumber about one half to 1% per day. So you'll need about a week or more to go from the 20% range to the 14% range. In addition to fans, you might also ask your builder or framing carpenter about running a dehumidifier to help dry your house frame out. Finally, you might want to use heat to dry out your lumber if you live in a climate where your wet lumber has frozen. But don't use propane heaters inside the house for drying wood. A propane heater can add one gallon of moisture to the air for every hour that it runs. Instead, put heaters outside the house to generate heat, and then blow dry, hot air back inside the house. If you live in a very cold climate, ask your framing carpenter what heater he recommends for drying your framing lumber. So, in summary, yes, it does matter if your house frame gets rained on, and you should test the moisture content of the lumber with a moisture meter before your drywall is hung. Definitely postpone drywall installation if moisture content is above 19%. But if possible, shoot for a moisture content of 15% or less for kiln-dried lumber or 17% or less for pressure-treated lumber. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned as much as I did. And I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. 
In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home. 